babes welcome to my channel my name is Anna and today we're going to be talking about makeup with fair skin do's and don'ts I hope you really enjoy this video and I'm so excited to get started okay a little introduction about my skin so I try to self tan regularly during the summer um, right now I'm coming out of my self tan it's a little bit patchy because it's mo moving into the paleness from the tan so basically I'm very 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 naturally pale or fair whatever and um that's just that's just it is what it is in the summertime I like to be a little bit tanner so I will use my self tanner during the winter months I kind of just let it be but um basically where we're at now is pale face because I don't tan my face at all and um we're going to talk a little bit about skincare not too much though so if you're pale or fair like me, you definitely need to be using sunscreen. So the CeraVe AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion, Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So this one is one that I use, dermatologist recommended, very great brand. Um, my skin is actually very sensitive as I've been saying in the past few videos. I started my acne regimen if, you're, if you don't know. So um, it's just very dry, dry patches everywhere, stuff like that. So I am going to go in with my Tula Skincare Rose Glow and Get It Eye Balm. I really like this one. It gives me glowiness and I really prefer that with my dry skin. It also has a cooling effect so that's really nice. And then I'm going to go in with that CeraVe Moisturizer with the sunscreen that I was talking about. On top of that, I'm going to go in again with my Tula Skincare Protect and Glow Daily Sunscreen Gel, and it's also SPF 30. If anybody knows if piling sunscreen on top of sunscreen um, like makes it stronger, let me know. I really don't know. Um, I just like this one because I like the glow of it, and the other one moisturizes a little bit better. So I really love using these two products in combination with each other. This gives me a little bit of a glow which I definitely need with my dry skin. So it's almost like an oil. I don't know. I really prefer it because my skin is like extremely dry. And then my lips are feeling a little bit crusty lately. So I'm going to go in with my Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask and just put that on them until we get up to the point of doing foundation. So now we are looking glowy and prepared. So I'm going to do my brows off camera and um, then I'll come back. Okay, one thing I do want to say is do find the right primer. So basically, um, this doesn't just go for fair skin, it goes for any types of skin color. But So basically, when I say primer, that is going to be the base of your makeup if you choose to use a primer. It can make it or break it. So basically, there are some primers that are good for oily and dry skin types, and then there are some primers that are good for either or. This one, I believe, is good for both skin types. It is the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Dew Primer. I really enjoy this. Makes your makeup stay on so long. It is limited edition, so I believe it's still available. I think it's a summer thing. Definitely get your hands on it while you have the chance. So if you're oily, even in your T-zone, if you have combination skin, so you're oily right here, and then you're kind of dry or normal skin type everywhere else on your face, then you're going to want to go with a mattifying primer. You might even want to do a combo of two different primers. That's what I recommend to people. Um, so basically, just look for anything that claims it's mattifying. Obviously, there's good and bad ones. I don't have oily skin. I haven't had oily skin for a while, but I have had it in the past. I don't do makeup on clients anymore, so I haven't really gotten to test around with different primers for oily skin. Um, so I can't really speak for that too well. But there is one that is very good. It's by Makeup Forever and it's the Mattifying Primer. Um, I've talked about it before in my videos. But that one's a good one for oily skin. One that is good for dry skin, which which is, that's what I have, is the Hangover Too Faced Hangover Primer. It's amazing. Love it, love it, love it. I wouldn't say that it is super long lasting, that it like helps in that. But I would say that it is very moisturizing and it keeps me from having dry patches throughout the day, which is very important for my skin type right now, more so than the long lasting. This one is perfect for long lasting, or I would say it was it's good for both um, skin types. So I'm going to be using the Jelly Pop one today, 
It does have a sticky consistency at first, but as soon as you put your primer or your foundation over it, it's going to go away. So don't freak out. I know some people are very picky about consistencies of stuff. Like, I promise you, like, it's sticky for, like, two seconds. And then you put your foundation on and it's completely gone. That stickiness is how it gets to stick your foundation on your face and keep it long lasting. So I definitely think it's worth it, even if you do have to wipe your hands off afterwards. And it, by the way, it smells like candy, like it's amazing smelling. So foundations with um, fair skin tones. It's extremely hard, at least for me, to find a foundation that works for my skin type and is something that I like. I like extremely full coverage but lightweight feel um, in a foundation typically. <sighs> It's, it's just, it's so hard to find the right skin tone along with the undertone of it. Um, a foundation that I do um, love that has those properties for me and just does it for me is the MAC Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. I wouldn't say it's waterproof. It is long lasting in my opinion. It does have a nice shade range for fair skin tones. It goes very light. Now, the MAC, the other MAC foundation that they have, it doesn't. It goes to something that I would consider tan skin, which I can wear it when I'm self-tanned, but I would not be able to wear it at all. It would just completely not match if I were in my pale self. So, I really recommend this foundation if you like full coverage, because it is very full coverage and long wearing. But it's nourishing at the same time, so it is for more of the dry skin people. Now, if you are oily and you have fair skin, then you could um, do a mattifying primer and um, try this out. I can't speak for it. I'm not going to tell you something that I'm not sure of, just because I want to be honest with you guys. So if that's something you're interested in purchasing and trying out yourself, please let me know how it works. Like. By the way, this is kind of random, but anytime you guys want to ask me a question and you're on my socials, like, please feel free to text me. I am, like, I love questions. I love it when people come to me and ask me for advice and stuff. Like, it is not a bother at all. I absolutely love it, and I feel so glad that I can be helpful to you guys. So that was just a little sidetrack, but um, I just wanted to pop that in there. I know um, the Too Faced Born This Way has a... It has a fairly good shade range with cool undertones, um, or different undertones, but I'm not a fan of the foundation. I just don't like the way it sits on my skin. Um, the Jour foundation, I have not tried the lighter shades. I've only tried the shade for when I'm self-tan, but um, it looks like they have a very good shade range of fair skin tones with different undertones. It's just difficult to choose. Like I talked about in my last Jour First Impressions foundation. Um, video. Anyways, but I love that foundation. I actually am going to try to get a lighter shade for my pale self um, that will match me in that way. And now for Ambeline, I'm just going to put my foundation on. I'm going to go in with a clean foundation brush, but you can feel free to use a beauty blender or whatever. So, see, the coverage is very um, much there. But it has a beautiful finish once it gets blended out. The smell of this foundation seriously like takes me back to like Ulta pre-COVID. Like, I just oh, that makes me so excited for some reason. <laughs> so I did change my mind. I think I am gonna go in with my beauty blender. I do think I prefer a foundation look with the beauty bl blender with this particular foundation. Um, this is the first layer, so you could definitely have it like medium to full coverage. Um, like I said, I just prefer the full coverage, so I am going to build it up a little bit. So a little bit more talk about foundation and finding your shade. I definitely recommend if you are in a store like... It's my um, ringtone. Long story. But if you're in a store like Ulta or Sephora, I'm not sure if they're doing the shade matching right now. I definitely recommend having somebody shade match you and s testing it on you if they are able to do that right now. Because um, that way you can see it on you and see if you actually like that shade. I know this is a do or don'ts video, but if I say something that I would recommend you not doing and you love doing it, do it girl like seriously 
if you find a way that works for you and somebody tells you that it's wrong, that's not, that doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's just a catchy title. It is just the recommended way of doing it. But if you find that a certain way works for you, then keep it that way. I'm not sitting here telling you, like, you can't do this, you can't do that ever. Like, this is just the things that I have found that work for me. So definitely, I know it can be um, very difficult, especially with fair skin, to find the right undertone. Um, I'm not super, super great with that, but I definitely recommend you go to somebody professional and let them tell you what your undertone is. That way you would be order, would be able to easily order your shade online if need be. And also another thing is um, mixing shades. Like if you have one foundation that is the same finish, so let's say you have a matte foundation, you can mix that matte foundation with a different company's matte foundation and it will, if they're two different shades, that way you can get the right shade for your skin color. So next I'm going to go in with um, concealer. Concealer is a little bit more like versatile for fair skin tones. Um, I find that it's easier to find a concealer that will match to my fair skin tone. So I really am loving the Morphe one and I'm using the shade C1.15 in it. Oh. The shade in the foundation is NW15 if you need it for reference. But um, this Morphe concealer is very affordable. Um, I'm a big fan of it. It works very nicely on my skin. I actually use this when I'm tan too. Which I will be coming out with a do's and don'ts for tan skin. Even though I know my skin doesn't get that tan. But it obviously gets more tan than it is right now because I would not consider it tan at all right now. So another thing with concealer is either find the right shade of your foundation or get one that's a tad bit lighter. Um, if you aren't as fair as me but you still consider yourself on the pa or f fair or side, whatever, um, then you need to be sure not to go too light. So this is optional, you do not have to do this, um, but I prefer to go in with a cream contour when I am on the fair side because I do feel like it just um, bronzes my face up a little bit. So these are the areas that I will contour in. I'm not a pro at contouring, but these is, this is just what works for my face shape. I know some people like to go up under here. As um, a lady with a chubbier face and a double chin, I actually think it emphasizes my um, fat roll up underneath there when I do it right. Or when I do it, maybe I'm not doing it right. Um, but I have found that personally doesn't work for me. But I just, I go along my cheekbones and then I will blend it out. I prefer blending it out with a beauty blender. And then I'll go, I'll do two little lines on like the both sides of my forehead. I don't have a very large forehead, but um, I just prefer it to darken it up. Not so much to actually contour the area. And I like to go up underneath my lip because I like the appearance of a bigger lip. Um, if I, if it was in my finances to get lip injections, I definitely would because I just prefer that look. I know that's very controversial, but that is just my preference. See, that definitely darkened up our face, or I shouldn't say darkened, bronzed up our face. Um, this one is not available anymore, which is why I'm not naming it because it would be unfair of me to tell you the name and it not even be there. Um... Sorry about that. I'm actually almost out. Um, I really need to get a new one, but um, you know, your girl's broke, so there's that. <laughs> so with um, under eye setting powder, I personally don't set my face all the way. If you're oily, that might be an option for you. I personally don't because I have very dry skin and I want to use the minimal amount of powder possible while still doing what it needs to do. I really like this Airspun Loose Face Powder and it's in the shade Translucent Extra Coverage. So for my fair pale people, you are really, really going to love this shade. Translucent Extra Coverage. So um, I really love the extra coverage because it just it makes your skin so flawless. I feel like that's the most important part about it. I have the translucent shade without the 
full coverage and I definitely prefer the full coverage one and um, it does have a very large shade range I believe this works good for darker skin tones um, as well so I really just put that on my lid and up underneath my eye where I put my concealer. I don't really put it anywhere else if I'm being honest. And I'm, a, I prefer not to bake just because, like I said, I like to use a minimal amount of powder possible. I'm not a huge fan of baking because of my dry skin. I always forget my cream blush for some reason, but if you would like to go in with a cream blush, um, that's fine. These stick brushes, or blushes, the stick cream blushes. I like to put it on my beauty blender like this so I'm not rubbing it so harshly on my face and my foundation is trying to come off. So I'll just dab some on my, um, or rub some on my beauty blender like that and then puff it on my face where I would normally put blush. And I think it's a beautiful, um, beautiful touch for fair skin is blush. I just, I absolutely love it. Um, I really go ham on my blush when I am my natural color. And this one in particular, I'm not sure if it's available. I'm going to have to check. Um, everything's always linked in the description box if it is available. But um, this is the Kiss and Smink. Kiss and Smink the Everything Blush in Tulum. To, to um, everything is actually linked in a, a Google Docs in my bio. Um, it's it's not sketchy or nothing. You just click on the link and it should take you to the docs. Because I was finding I was running out of characters in my description box and I wasn't able to type anymore because the links were so long. So I just took it into a different link. Okay, so for eyes, I really prefer like um, nude blush colors. So some palettes that I really love are the Nudie Patootie by Laura Lee Los Angeles palette. It's just beautiful, beautiful. It's a bit messy right now, but it's beautiful, just rosy, nudie colors. I'm a big fan of that. I think I'm actually going to go in with the Huda Beauty New Nude palette today, and I'm just going to do a very light, natural looking eye. Nothing crazy today. So I am going to go in with the lightest color that matches my skin color on my lid almost and just kind of set it like that. And then I'm going to go in with Secret, which is this almost like, I don't know, it's, it's a mauve nude shade, very light mauve nude shade. I'm going to put that in my crease and just build it up in my crease. If you wanted to do something a little bit fancier, you could go in with a darker shade like this and put it even more concentrated in your crease. Today, I'm just going to leave it at this color. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with my finger and I'm going to get this glitter shade right here. It's in the shade Crave. It's a very light pink mauve shade. And just put it roughly, or not roughly, but sparingly on my lid. So not in an exact order or anything like that. And then for up underneath my lid, I'm going to go in with a brush that's kind of like a pencil brush. And I'm going to go in with that secret shade that I used in my crease. And just go up underneath my lid. Like that. Okay, so you can go in with an eyeliner if you'd like. Um, this isn't really an eye tutorial, more so as it is a face products tutorial. So I just went in with my Mia Dora immovable waterproof eyeliner pencil and just went on my bottom lash line or waterline, sorry. And then I'm going to go in with my L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise Primer. Next I'm going to go in with my L'Oreal Paris Telescopic and Carbon Black. Okay, now we're going to talk about bronzers. So, my recommendation is do go with a shade that is lighter and um, suits your skin tone well. Don't try to go with more of a darker shade for tanner skin because I have found when I use the darker shades on my pale skin, it like just 
clashes and it looks a little bit muddy. So I do um, have to go with lighter shades. So this Tarte Park Ave Princess Amazonian Clay Waterproof Bronzer is great. I um, am a big fan of it for my pale skin. So I would just lightly go in and blend it into my cheekbone. The same area really that I put my contour besides up underneath my lip because I just don't go out of my way to do that with powder bronzer. So I will do it on both sides of my forehead, my cheekbone area, and then I will contour my nose with a different brush. I use a, like a soft, dense brush like this. And then I'll go in and contour my nose with the lighter shade. I just have to make sure that I blend my nose contour very well. My eyes have been watering like crazy lately. I'm not really sure what's causing it. I'm assuming it's just seasonal allergies, but they are just like pouring. It literally looks like I'm crying, but it's just my eyes are watering. And there it goes. Please don't. No. Uh. I took my Allegra this morning. Okay, so with blush, I think it's um, the best option to go with a lighter shade compared to a darker shade. Now, don't get me wrong, I have gone with a darker shade with my pale skin, and it still looks amazing. But, if you're wanting a more natural looking, just flows together very well look, then I do recommend... Then I do recommend going with a lighter shade. And I would just put it on my cheek area. And if you wanted to, you could even put some on your nose. And after I do my blush, what I do like to do is go in with a Milani Baked Bronzer in the shade Dulce. So basically any baked bronzer that has a little bit of shimmer in it that's a lighter shade is what I would recommend. This one is just perfect for me, so that's why I said it. Duh. And I will go in with a big fluffy brush, like a typical powder brush, get some of that and kind of just go in between and back and forth where I put my bronzer and my blush. I just think it gives it a beautiful glow while also bronzing it up. I even put some on my nose. It's not super strong and pigmented, so it's the perfect thing for this. Okay, and for highlight, I do recommend you going with the lighter shade, one that suits your skin tone best, compared to going with a um, dark shade. Rosy shades are also very nice, which is what I'm going to be using today. This is by Catherine Natural Cosmetics. And it is Sienna's Highlight. Again, not sure if it's still available. I will check. I'm going to be using a rosy shade like this today, but the Ofra Highlighter in Rodeo Drive is also a great option. Really anything that you want to do with tan skin or that you think looks good on tan skin, you can do it with pale skin. You just have to kind of switch up the shades a bit. That's all. Okay, now that highlighter's on, just for my dry skin, I do like to go in with a moisturizing, um, refreshing, hydrating spray. And I'm using the Avon, Evon, whatever, whatever it's called, the water company, the um, natural mineral water, the facial spray. That just feels so refreshing and nice. Now for lips, um, same thing. You can go in with any shade. I do prefer a rosier shade when I am lighter in skin tone. So I will go in with my NYX Professional Makeup Matte Lip Liner in the shade London and line my lips because I do like the illusion of a bigger lip. My eye is watering again. Now I'm going to go in with my Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Color in the shade Rose. 
Okay guys, I think that wraps up this video. That is the Makeup with Pale Skin Do's and Don'ts.